and welcome to the Dad and Sons podcast. I'm your now no longer absent dad or son, Mr. Liam Edwards. Or daughter. <laughs> Joining me this week for another wonderful and explicit, depending on where we go, podcast episode this week. This may or may not be the first not safe for work uh, dad and sons topic, depending on a hilarious news topic that uh, we may or may not decide to get into later this week. but Which everyone already knows about. Wait, you, you, you really think... You really think we've been safe for work this whole no. time? I, no. I mean, when you're t- thinking about, like, audio, no. y- y- you have to, like, start... I don't think so. Start gauging the, the line between, like, body humor and innuendo. There's gonna be, there's gonna be, like... There's definitely gonna be someone out there who is gonna have been like, oh, you should check out this new podcast, and then has been, like, sat back with a friend listening to it while awkward silence descends upon them as they listen to the topics we talk about. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> long story short, welcome to a partial donger podcast. We just got an email explaining locker room donger politics after That's talking true. about locker room donger politics yeah. last week. Um, Matt just got back from looking at naked men at the gym. Yeah, that's Matt too busy getting buff visual. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. I, I even have enough time to go in there and look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do the podcast. <laughs> we're, we're having a little a little discussion behind the scenes about whether or not we should talk about um, um, more dongers later on in the news. There's two different news stories that happened over the past like week and a half that 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 scratch sexuality. And that that voice that you hear clambering is George. I'm so thirsty, Weedman. Whoa. I'm not thirsty. I have Whoa. I have my coffee right here. What are you thirsty Whoa. for, George? Thirsty for some uh, some dongos, eh, George? Some some brow browsette. Oh God! <laughs> I if we if we have time for the one the one um um dong story in particular, I ooh, you know I'm gonna be a giggly wreck with that one, but we might we might we gotta we we gotta ski that along because it's um late in Japan and early in California, uh, but here on the Dad and Sons podcast, you are just right. You mean in Georgia, it's just right. Yeah. Like, it's like 1030 there. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's nice. It's like, you know, you you had a nice rest. Prime time. Yeah. God, man, I, nice feel, rest I, feel, I feel so Woke guilty. up from a night of gaming. You know, I, like, ah, <laughs> nice God and fresh, damn it. ready to go. Why are you twisting the <laughs> knife? All right, all right. I did wake up from a night of gaming. What did you guys wake up from? <laughs> What what is like kind of passive aggressive douchely way to introduce it? I'm sorry. I'm George. I'm just gonna shrink why, away. Why did you guys wake up? Like why? Why did you even wake up in the first place? You woke up from a hard days of work, George. Hard days I of mean, work. I am still exhausted from the Tokyo Game Show. I mean, we yeah. could just we could just jump straight into that train. Let's jump in. Let's splash splash in. Well, you didn't have to jump in. You you were already there. I mean, you're, I was there, already there, and now I'm not there, and <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> Liam, why are you exhausted? What exhausted you at the, the Tokyo Game Show? Into the segue that we are already in. <laughs> <laughs> let's, con- let's just continue segueing. <laughs> Speaking of the Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> what did you see in Tokyo Game Show, Liam, in that show? A lot of people. <laughs> just, just, just seas of people. Just people in my way. What all type, the time. What type of people did you see, Liam? They, they were all shorter than me. Oh, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they were ch- it's because they were children, Matt. Even Gerard? Why why'd you have to go there? Oh, okay. Oh <clears throat> now I'm the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to the Tokyo Game Show last week, as many may recall from my heavily edited segment by George last week. I put the cutest little music. Including music that a lot of people appreciated and one person absolutely fathomably hated <laughs> was really? like was like please never let me hear that music ever again which i what found was the hilarious music? it was katamari damachi music yeah weird some people just don't like happiness you know you know they you know you know what's happening with, with, with katamari right they're, they're making a remaster they're, they're finally making it they're finally making a remaster they are and i played it at the tokyo game show what a oh, segue oh, man oh, so, <laughs> the segue into the segue into the segue 
I, wow. Well, How much well, Segway Inception are we going to be doing today? I know. Well, uh, we can we can cut the segways now. I played a couple of games at Tokyo Game Show yeah. because, as I said, there was far too many people. So the lines, even on the media days and the business days, were so long that it was like, why the fuck do I even bother coming here? One of them was Katamari Damacy, which yes. is still the same game. But on the Switch, it's not really changed wait, at all. Wait, wait, wait. Don't say it like that. Do, do you know what resolution it's running at? Frame rate? Uh, doesn't, I Ratio? mean, it was, only in, it was only in handheld, so I couldn't really tell if it was, like, up res or anything. Yeah. You know, it's running on that 70, 720p Nintendo Switch screen. Which is still a nice step up from the yeah, original. Yeah, but the screen's so that small level. that even if you were playing, like, the PS2 version on that screen, it, it would still look good. You know. I would still be happy, though. But it still plays the same, and it's, you know, the ca- the camera is what I'd hope they would fix a little bit. You know how awkward and finicky it gets a little time mm-hmm. after, you know, once you start rolling along, you know. Um, but it's the same. It's the same game. It's good. I'm going to buy it. It'll be fine. It was good. Yeah. Nothing I, mind. I but it's actually nice to expect see, to pick that one up. Like, nice no questions see, asked. Uh, Katamari yeah. game coming out. Fun you know. ass game. In these in these in these days, yeah, um, it's just like the, one of the most pure, enjoyable, innocent, like honest thrills of video. Like I'm pretty sure it's one of my favorite games of all time. Like up there somewhere in well, a place in my heart next to Metal Gear and stuff. You're not gonna be disappointed, I don't think. I mean, the experience doesn't seem to be hampered in any way by being on the Switch. Playing it in handheld was really, you know, really cool and really sweet. It's so hard to be, imagine them screwing fine. up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, some you didn't have to pay for bad. online to play. Yeah, as long as you- <laughs> 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 oh man, I want to talk about that so bad, but I don't think we have time today. Like <laughs> that shit's so bad. Anyway, aside from that, I play. Well, I I tell you what, I didn't get to play, mm. but I watched people play, and that's Sekiro, the new From Software game. Right. So I yep, really yep. wanted to play that. But so did, did watch everybody people? else who lives in Tokyo. Of course. So Of course, even, why wouldn't they? Even on the second day, where I arrived early, specifically Oof. so I could try and play Sekiro, because it was the only game I was actually interested in, like, lining up for and playing. Um, within three minutes of the doors opening... Oh all my of God. the day's <laughs> tickets all of the day's tickets because no. the playstation booth you had to like select a ticket for the game you want so they have oh they the do that of system for the amount of people they the think Kirby they can fit Cafe in one system. day if everything mm-hmm. goes swimmingly <laughs> and all the second row tickets had gone within three minutes on both oh, days that's sad so i just stood behind the people playing it and just watched them play the demo and although i you know I can't. I couldn't get a feel of what the gameplay is like. Obviously, you know you have to play something to truly experience. Gotta put your it. hands on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get right up there and feel it. You know, yeah. grab it by the controller. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were gonna segue into one of our news topics that we may or may not have time for this week. Oh my god! <laughs> put a fucking put a lid on it. Put, put it back pieces. in his pants, George. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. I, I mean, the person in particular seems to have a problem with not, but oh, go on, go on, <laughs> George. <laughs> Fuck sakes, he's making it. He's making it. Making sure that we cover it, basically. No, what's going to happen is he's going to keep it doing it, and, and he we're... edits the podcast too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, we're going to have to make sure he doesn't. So then he has to edit in his own little segment where he just talks about a dick on his own <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs> I, I, I won't, um, you know, push it out too Make hard. Sure you use I, I won't too. That kind of try to uh, uh, violate your, um, Jesus your, your, your personal space. <laughs> I, I won't be like peeping on you in the dressing room, so to speak, backstage. Anyways, continue. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. while I was peeping on other people playing Sekiro, it looked good. It looks like a Souls game. It moves the same. The way you sort of, you know, circle uh, like. You make you make sort of circular patterns around the enemy. You strafe sort of sideways and back and forth, kind of avoiding their attacks in a very Dark Souls kind of way. Um, it definitely seems a bit more like Bloodborne. It's really aggressive, 
It's a lot more aggressive than the Dark Souls games in so the vein is, of Bloodborne. W- would you say the primary point of reference here is Bloodborne, or would it be one yeah, of the Tenchu would, games? No, it, no, I would say it's Bloodborne. It's basically Bloodborne with Tenchu skin. Huh. That's, that's not... And that's why that's, it's, that's why it's going to be fucking awesome. That sounds pretty great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised that... The only thing that, I was that, super disappointed by that I didn't notice in their gameplay demos when they were playing, like, at E3 and stuff, is, you know, the sort of grappling hook? Mm-hmm. It's definitely, like, uh, you have to aim it at stuff, and then maybe a green circle will appear, and then oh, you can go no. to that oh. thing. That Monster Hunter World-type gra- garbage. Yeah, man. I don't think it's as bad as that, but I was disappointed it wasn't like, oh, I can just Spider-Man my way around this whole area, fucking sneaking up on people. If, if, it's definitely if, like, uh, oh, you need to look for the obvious tree branch that's poking out oh so then, no yeah the wedge beetle i was super oh, no. super disappointed by that but hopefully maybe that was some ui option or something that someone had on but it was like green circles flashing on stuff that you sort of hovered over i guess like as as, as someone who does development you might be able to think of a lot of reasons why they wouldn't want the player swinging like out of the stage oh, yeah, it's or like, uh, we you know people break well, the yeah, souls game all the time scenery but. When you can make fucking... it that like oh only like the top of rooftops or something like that or you could you could you could fandangle that. I don't there's know. Ways, there's there's ways, ways that you do it where you yeah. there are ways that you do it where you create safe states for the player to like fall back onto if they like slip or fall off something or they're sort of peeking over the edge like Spider Man does. Spider Man does it really well. Um, but yeah, I was a little disappointed by that. But hopefully maybe now it's not as limited like it's not as limited as it looked when someone else was playing it. I can't really, I can't, without playing it, I can't really tell you how limiting it was. But the actual demo that I saw was released in video form like a couple of days ago. So anyone can watch the demo that was at TGS. Um, But it looks good. I'm excited by it. Two other games I'm excited by. It seems like Capcom are on like their, Mm. their resurgence. One of the, one of these I'm excited for. The other one I'm super excited for. Okay, so the one I'm excited for, but not super excited for, is Devil May Cry Five. Yeah, the same. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my preferences too. I don't. I love me some Devil May Cry, but RE2 is a little bit higher. Although on I will my, admit, my list, my my TGS experience was heightened more by Devil May Cry Five outside of the gameplay, uh, mostly because I spent a lot of my time. A very good friend of mine, Matt Walker, who works at Capcom, is the producer on Devil May Cry 5. So he had the responsibility of standing on the stage a lot to talk about the game in front Mm -hmm. of, like, hundreds of Japanese people. And this is kind of his first big role, and he's kind of the public face of Devil May Cry 5 at the moment. But being me, I couldn't help but try to distract him from the crowd... (laughs) <laughs> so most of my enjoyment Get some of words in. Devil May Cry 5 was trying to blow him kisses and distract him while he's on stage in front of a hundred oh, Japanese that's good. people. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And it works because he spotted me and then I could see his like grin across his face and eyebrow raise and then immediately it's no sound like snaps a question at him and he like snaps back into producer mode. And not even was that. He- not even did, that. Did he speak Japanese to the crowd or English? Oh yeah, Matt. Matt's Japanese is like the best that that it comes for foreigners. Huh. He's 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 incredible. That the mental knows. image is real fun. I'm picturing right now. Well, <laughs> thank you, Liam. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's a good kid. But I was like teasing the fuck out of him because as soon as that stage show finished, people wanted autographs from him. I was oh like, my god. I was like, that ain't gonna fly. What a, what a star. <laughs> So Devil I was May Cry like, producer, please I sign my of, disc. I kind of rugby tackled him while he was uh, <laughs> autograph <laughs> while he was autographing. Please I was like, "You're not disc. a rock star," and then uh, tackled him. But that was fun. But the, then I played the game, and the, I will admit the game was also fun. It's very much Devil May Cry. It's 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 taking elements of the the what are they called Ninja Theory. DMC game, mm-hmm. sort of in like that style. 
Like uh, a not, lot of people might be mad. No, like, like a lot of people want to pretend that never existed. Yeah, I don't know why that game's good, um, but I don't. I don't mean style in the, in the same sense. Like oh, they've changed Dante a lot. Whereas, well, they kind of have. He's like an old guy now. But no, I mean like just sort of like punk, graffiti, really? skater type. Yeah. You can okay. see it in the trailers. That's what they're going for. Less like old Devil May Cry heavy metal, even though there's a lot of that in it. But with like the focus on Nero, you know, he's like, he's like the young guy. So he's kind of like egotistical, punk. Right, so there's a lot right. of that. There's like that, a lot of that. You know, you didn't see that from the trailer. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. But you see like, more of it, it in no, the game. No, 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 not you. Not no. I'm talking about George. Like no, you didn't no, see that not, from the trailer. The it looks E3 exactly trailer, like the last one. Dante just, just like rides a motorcycle onto the scene, and there's no like graffiti anywhere. Well, you've not yeah, seen much it, of the game. It's then. still the same. No, like, I didn't watch any TGS trailers. Okay, here's the thing. I don't usually oh, watch trailers this is past the first reveals. Trailer. This is the first trailer I'm talking about. The TGS trailer the is like a Dante focus one. It yeah, looks like yeah. a blend of the two, like the craziness yeah, yeah. of the it's, it's la like the old school that. ones and yeah. the very edgy style. Yeah, it's the Matt, young you're dude absolutely being right. in there. Like that is yeah. what it is. Like a hundred percent, it's a blend of the two. Definitely more leaning towards, of course, the Capcom side of things, and you know they introduced this like new character who is like this heavily tattooed boy band looking fucker who, to be fair, talks in rhymes and has a parrot that talks or a bird i don't know if it's a that parrot. sounds fun yeah and also on top of that he floats with a cane so he just hovers with a cane and his name is v so i don't know take that for what it's worth did, did they have the song though well, depends what song you're talking about. You're talking about the awful Dante theme that everyone hated. Yeah. That was by I, I a chose sexual molester. not to listen to it. <laughs> and, and apparently so did Capcom. Yeah. Because they re-edited trailers. <laughs> also, Capcom didn't realize until they released the song and then everyone was like, hey, the guy who sings this song was like arrested for like sexually manipulating a 17 year old girl oh Seems no Capcom, oh, that's Seems. a little similar to one of the news stories that we all oh may or god. may not oh get it in the news pants, section George. later fucking put it in <sighs> fucking pants just gotta do some stretching and uh but the game yes. like the game is good it's more devil may cry it's gorgeous like it's absolutely gorgeous whatever engine capcom i've got in-house right now that's pumping out the stuff they're doing from off the back of Resi 7. It's gorgeous. The lighting in that game is amazing. And I will admit, although you have like very traditional Devil May Cry combat with like the guns and the swords and different weapons, Nero's arm mechanic, now where he can have different arms that all do different things, is really cool. And it and changes. You pick it up from the floor. You pick it up from the floor. So like like you'll use them and they'll have like a certain amount of usage. This is then, weird, man. Then they'll explode and you'll find new ones. That that's weird to me. Like it is weird to I me. I guess as that's well. very action y. Like I'm I'm not connected to Devil May Cry. Like I've played through all of them, but I never really like said like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going out of my way to play this game. Yeah. Like yeah. I just never really enjoyed the combat that much. I'll go out of my way for three. Yeah. I think that's the one, though, like... I mean, none of them are as good as Bayonetta, but this one is pretty fun, and... Maybe I'm just not into the action-type games. Maybe. That's probably what it is. And this game is weird, because you can play through this whole game, I think, with just the guns and the swords, but then, like, Nero's whole arm thing just, like, changes everything up. It's really hard to combo with his arm, but once you get, like, good stuff in, it does, like, immense damage and, like, all the different variations of stuff... Like, all the different variations of the arms you can get all do vastly different things. Like, some are, like, burst damage, grenade-type things. The ones that grab enemies and pull them towards you. <laughs> kind of like someone's handshake that we we could talk George, if... shut the fuck up! <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was literally getting to this, a part this, this about is... a new breaker arm <laughs> that Nero has that's called... Why am I forgetting the name? I think it's called Sweet Surrender, right? And it's basically a vibrator. 
like a Japanese vibrator. Oh, really? And the the <laughs> the, the the flavor text for it, it 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 says that it helps calm Nero's girlfriend down. So it's a vibrator. Yeah. See, we could have got to that very naturally if you just. Just, just calm the shit, George. <laughs> Let, let's let's no, no. Let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about. Let's just talk about the penis. Let's just let's just go ahead. <laughs> well, it's I not mean, the news section yet, and that's a uh, news story. <laughs> Why'd you keep bringing it up then? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what have you done? Let's let's have you talk, or unless you wait, want wait, me wait, to talk. Wait, wait, wait. I have another wait, D word. I have wait, two D. Wait, wait. wait two you have two Ds. Wait, wait, I have two Ds. Wait. I have to talk about the best game I played, though. Go on. All right, I'm going to go use the restroom then. All right, see you guys. <laughs> Resident Evil 2. Yeah! I was hoping that we would not skip that one. Because this is like, ooh, this has been a dream come true since since the RE1 remake from like 2001. I, I feel like I've waited decades for something like this. Hands down the best game at that show that I played. Hell yeah. And there were two demos. There was the Leon opening, like, police... Segment redone demo, and then there was Claire facing off against what's his name? Hawkins is his name Hawkins. It's not Hawkins. Dawkins. What's his name? Like at the very start of the game in Claire's story, it's that demo, and both of them are fucking awesome. Really, really, really impressive. I can't believe how much. Like it's an it's it's a completely different game. It follows like the same sort of set pieces uh, that you can picture playing Resident Evil 2 and the story. But man, they play so well. They feel so good. Like it has like the plodding of old Resident Evil games, but with like Resident Evil 4 controls, no shitty tank controls. Which I, 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 I am partially approving of because of the uh, Leon Kennedy main character. No, like it fits with the Resident Evil 4 like control scheme it's like resident evil 4 control scheme made now like that refined modern day combat combined with what made the can, resident can you move and shoot or do you have to yes, stop you can oh and okay. even better what's really cool about this is like you have to aim your gun because your torchlight is connected to your gun mm -hmm. so you can't just see everything so you, so if you want to look at stuff you have to pull your gun away so, like, it, like, blinds you from other areas that, like, enemies might appear. Oh, so there's, like, a, a visibility mechanic. Go. Kind <laughs> Is of. Is it, like, a good version of Doom 3's flashlight? Yeah, kind of. But it's, like, you know, it really obscures your... Uh, it obscures your vision and stuff like that. So... It really helps with like you taking your time and plodding through it. I have I have a very important question. What's that? How did your bullets to green herbs ratio feel? Like like how often did you run out of either supply? Fair, fair. When I when I was doing when I was doing the Claire demo, I had a distinct lack of ammo. Yes. I had a distinct lack of ammo. Oh yes, it's been so long. And I noticed there were like trunks mm -hmm. in in like save rooms and areas where you can definitely still do the sharing between the two. <laughs> oh my god that's cute but also speaking of like devil may cry 5 looking gorgeous this game is like on another level it's like really? uncanny valley scary like mm, because they're all look some stuff up. Uh, uh what is it like photogrammetry or whatever it's called where they scan mm -hmm. people's faces like they when yeah, they the, the started battlefront with, stuff yeah like the stuff they started with the resident evil 7 in capcom mm -hmm. like it's all that so like all the character models are like scarily uncanny valley just kind of a little off which kind of really fits for resident evil i think like you have these hyper realistic looking people but they are made of computer textures so there's like something that isn't quite right about it and that fits so perfectly for Resident Evil. But then, so like, everything the is scary? Even regular talking? Yeah, because it's I guess like... there's not much of a story for those no, games yeah, anyway. But that makes, that makes even more sense because they obviously haven't perfectly synced up the talking because of also the Japanese dub. So it's still, like, a little off. 
So okay. the, when they mouth move, sometimes the audio isn't like perfectly in sync. So it, it it's even more like pulling you out a little bit. And and I'm I'm guessing they're gonna rewrite the script to uh, not be terribly translated. But I'm hoping it Maybe. still has that like know. surrealness to it. But it was I always good. appreciated that. Like yeah. Silent Hill and RE, I liked how janky the translation was in the older games because that made them feel like alien in, the, in that way the goal is like amazing and on top of Ooh. that the best thing about it <gasps> was the fact that when leon gets bit like so if he gets bitten and then like mm -hmm. an enemy is overwhelming you and he pushes him off the bite mark stays on his neck Ooh. So when it like transitions Polish. into cutscenes, he's like talking and he has like this giant scar <laughs> on his neck, like this giant bite mark. Oh, that and it sounds just stays exploitable there. and fun. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. That game was the easily the best thing I played. It was I played it twice. I I, I waited in line to play it once for the Leon demo, then the Claire demo, and then I went back and played the Leon demo again. I it was I good also shit brought up some video footage just now where you were talking and I saw that this game has interactable light switches this has a lot of interactable stuff and also it had like I don't know if Resident Evil 7 had this but there's a lot of finding objects walking up to them looking in your inventory to see if it like will work or connect a little more mm -hmm. dynamically kind of like a point and click adventure oh game which was always a weird Dari thing too as well yeah but there was like this electrical panel and I think, like, the person I was, like, playing with said there's, like, two different ways you could do it. Like, if you found something first, you could go up to it and, like, ram it open with a crowbar. Or if you waited until you got through a certain part of the story and you got Leon's knife, you could then, like, cut all the tape around it and then pull it off and stuff. So it seemed like it was a little more dynamic. It wasn't, like, cut and dry. A goes to B, B goes to C with the items connecting to things. But I don't know how extensive that is. But the game's shaping up to be pretty good. It was worth going all the way to Tokyo and being surrounded by thousands of people for... Being a, a interconnected kind of puzzle box point-and-click adventure world is something that the old-school Resident Evil's had that's kind of gotten lost in translation. Um, having... There was a lot of puzzles. I think Having be... puzzles is definitely something that, that's that's decreased over time. It's cool to see them... It's really, it's not just cool, actually. I think, like, like the game design of that stuff is fantastic. It's great to see RE go back to, to its roots like this. There's not much else out there like it these days. There's definitely, there's definitely a lot of puzzles, a lot more than I can remember in recent games. But it's definitely shot up to my most hyped game for next year so far. Are we are we old if we are most hyped for remakes than sequels? No, because this is this is just like on another level. I don't I can't think of anything in remake history that is like this different. It's an entirely different game. It's it's definitely considering the change in camera angle and control scheme, it's even more far removed than oh, it's, it's RE one would been from remake. Oh yeah, no, it's like it's leagues different. It's it's a completely different. It's like reading a screenplay written by someone else, then trying to imagine it. And the screenplay was written like twenty years ago, and you're like trying to reimagine what the fuck they were thinking at the time, taking only the aesthetic. And the bare bones story, and then trying to just remake it today. So now the only um, um, old feeling part of the original Tridge is three. They, they they have yet to remake that one, and they could do some really fun Dude, stuff with the like Nemesis AI modern these days. Resident Evil Three with like Nemesis chasing you across a map through like persistent yeah. rooms like in a battle royale style thing but it's yeah just maybe like a hunting kind of system <laughs> mechanic going on you could like throw him <laughs> off by walking your your scent over your other scents or something that would be awesome yeah yeah there's interesting places they could do with that guy nowadays yeah but you'll be so ha yeah i think you're gonna be super impressed and happy with I mean, they could just be two vertical slices that were really good, and the rest of the game could be shit, but <laughs> so far, so good. We've only seen police stations so far, none of the, yeah. the train station or but the lab. I will admit, and like, it was pretty fucking brutal. Like, the, there's a bit at the end of the Claire demo where she's, like, 
got a gun pulled on her face. Then she gets like pistol whipped across the face while she's handcuffed and then kicked in the gut and like shot at and everything. It's fucking, it's, it's fucking good. It's good shit. So, um, does that wrap up most of what you wanted to hit for TGS? Um, I mean, I could very quickly talk about a game called Roto Ring, which was like the the other best thing I played, but it's not a game. It's a analog art piece, which sounds pretentious. What? It was really fun. It was, uh, but I'll very quickly go over it. So in the one hall of TGS is the indie area. And the indie area this year was huge. There was like double the amount of games there was last year. But there was this one guy who had two wooden pieces that had like one big circle of LEDs and then inside that an inner circle of LEDs, right? Mm -hmm. And it was on a wooden panel. And then there was a controller, but it was like a wooden box with like a DJ volume knob on it and one button. And the idea was that all the LEDs are lit, but two. One of them is black, and one of them is white. So you play the white LED, and you can turn the like volume knob to make the LED go around the circle. And the idea is to then get it in the black LED, so for them to touch, and then you go to the next level. So like a puzzle. But you have these red LEDs, that block your path. So you have to change between the outer circle and the inner circle to hop back and forth between the red LEDs. Kind of like if you were playing like a rhythm game. And then the game progresses, anal like it's completely analog. So the only feedback you have is the LEDs being turned on or off. And it gets more and more difficult with the red LEDs then moving in patterns around the circle and you have to like hop back and forth between the two tracks. Mm -hmm. And you have to solve the puzzles by thinking about how you can change the timing. And then sometimes, depending on what track you were on, if you move the white LED, the black LED would also move away from you. So then you had to like twist it a little bit, skip to the next track, like then turn it, then skip to the next track, and then move closer. It was really, really clever and incredibly fun to play. Could they, like, do a arcade version of that setup? Well, I asked him, and he said he's only ever built... Because he, he hand-builds all of them. So he completely hand-builds all of it, programs it, because it's all, like, inbuilt in the controller to the board. Whoa. He's only built, like, a hundred of them, and most of them are in exhibits or museums. Or he builds them for, like, special occasions, like events like TGS. So you can't just like physically buy it, but it was really, really cool and they're all custom built. I think you should you should definitely Google a video of it. It will you will get what I have just said very quickly because it's very, very simple. And then when you've finished all the levels, you the all the LEDs will light up in a sort of a clock, and then it will that will tell you how fast you completed it. It was really Interesting. smart. Interesting. So it it's like an really... analog video game. Yeah, it was a completely analog video game. And there was no screens or anything. It was so much fun to play, Which, though. <laughs> yeah, if there's no video, it's... Because it's definitely a game. But would you call it a video game if there's no video screen? No, I wouldn't. I, fa I found a video of it, actually. I'm going to send it to you. You can see it. If you skip to... 23 seconds in. All right. And uh, curious listeners, please uh, check the description on the timestamp for uh, yes. this video we are talking about. But it's like the one I played is different to this one. This one looks a bit bigger and a bit more fancy than the one he has in this video. But yeah, it's like that completely analog thing where you have to change the tracks. You skip to 50 seconds in, you can see it. Oh, no. I think I might be too colorblind to play this. Huh? Yeah, yeah. The There's 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 some red LEDs. Oh, if those are LEDs. What? what, what? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of very similar looking colors. Maybe I just need to turn Flux off. Oh, no. Now it just looks like they're different shades of blue with some reds. <laughs> I think because of the lighting in the video, it doesn't help. They look purple instead of white. But uh, yeah, but you get the general idea. Yeah, and it was yeah. that was really really fun. 
And I think it won best <laughs> game design at the award show for TGS. Like they have like the annual TGS award show for the games that were shown, and I think he actually did win. Even though it technically is not a video game. Are you able to figure it out without any kind of instructions lying yes. around? Yeah, all he said Whoa. was like, you turn the thing to move the white LED around the circle and you press the button to change the track and that was it. And then you naturally progress through, I think it's 10 different levels, like it scales in difficulty. And it's, it's not that hard to finish if you stick with it a little bit. I managed to complete it in about four minutes, I think. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. It was kind of a crazy cool project to look at. But yeah, that was the other good thing. In terms of actual video games though, Resident Evil 2, that was the best game. Yeah, I'm super happy to hear that too. <laughs> but yeah, fuck TGS, um, man. Wait, I thought you liked... No, like, just Google... Like, I know there was a new Death, Stra Death Stranding trailer. Mm -hmm. But just Google the picture of the Kojima talk from TGS and just look at how many freaking people are there. Hideo Kojima talks Death Stranding at TGS. There's a video, let's see. There's quite a crowd. I don't know if the camera's looking at the crowd. It's It was madness. Even on the business days, it was madness. There's so many people. It, I've it, seen some pictures of TGS that looked like they would cause me extreme anxiety, but just, I don't know. I'd still go is, like, once in my are life. People like, oh yeah, Gamescom has a lot of people. Yeah, but the Gamescom show floors are massive. They're absolutely the, uh, massive. The, the whereas, trains on the way to Gamescom are probably a lot less crowded, too. Yeah, whereas did, technically the Tokyo Game Show is actually in Chiba, not actually in Tokyo City. So you have to get like the single track train out to Chiba. And everyone's on it. Oh, it's a nightmare. I do not miss the, the Japanese commute hours on those trains. Yeah. As, as great as the trains are, uh, you can tell because everyone in the entire country is using them. That's true. Anyway, I've bored Matt long enough. Yeah, Matt, I want to I wanna, I wanna hear you be excited. What's, what's, what's exciting you these days? So... I played my first game of D and D last Thursday. Oh <gasps> shit! Ooh. Yeah, the one tweet a year was about D and D, right? <laughs> the one tweet. No, no. I've been consistent, except for yesterday, of tweeting one tweet a day. Okay. There you go. One you tweet see, a day. Good, the good. people want it, Matt. Look how many gotta messages ease back you got. Into it. People want it. <laughs> I gotta make it interesting. It's hard coming up with interesting things. Nobody wants to be interesting. Yeah. Twitter. Anyways. Who is interesting on Twitter? Nobody. I'm and I'm. I don't talk about political views and stuff. And that's that's what people like. Um. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I'm all about fun. All right. Uh. Yeah. So D and D. I always enjoyed watching D D because it was cool to see like people not be afraid to be like super nerdy out in the open you know like making funny voices you know playing a, a wizard you know named pikachu you know like it, it's just i always enjoy that kind of like aspect of it and it was always like fun to watch people you know it's it, like the game is built on imagination you know the fun depends on you know the people you you have around you, and uh, I guess like riffing off each other. I yeah. mean, it depends on how you play. M make sure George isn't in in the group. That's <laughs> that's that's a big step to having what? fun with D and D. Why? Because I can't suspend my disbelief like they can. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh no. Anyways, continue. What did you find a roach or something? Like what was what was that? I I, I think Mr. Driller might be tapping at my walls again. <laughs> Cut. All right, a lot of editing this this podcast. So I I went to a, a place here that they have a Adventures League. Adventures League is like, I, I guess it's kind of like a newbie thing where you do one shots with a bunch of random people. At least this is the way the store does it, and it's like a bunch of tables. So they welcome new players. You jump in. There's a bunch of DMs that go out there. They they get the module which is like the story that they have to follow a uh, week before they study it. And then they come here and they make us run through like a, 
a, a done a scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get there and like I already I've been watching D and D for quite a long time. So I get there. Um, this guy named Chad, great, great dude, awesome dude. He's the one who who pushed me to, to come. I was good in, in ten minutes. He tossed me to a group group of a bunch of newbies maybe like one or two people who knew what they were doing it took two hours for the the dm to help build characters for these guys it was that's so long that's a long time because i guess they were like super super green you know those green plantains is too green that even if you fry them green they don't really taste very good people from the islands know what i'm talking about um Yes. So um I got to I got to say like there was this one guy me and him really clicked. I could only this he could only be described as the black oh My god, you found one. The black Matt from uh his name was Matt. You're, Wait, you're the, the black, black Matt. Matt. <laughs> yeah. The black Matt. The black version <laughs> of Matt. From Super Best Friends, uh, which also his name. Uh, yes, he looks okay. exactly like a black Matt. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is weird. Um, uh, so it was it was fun. It was it was fun as hell. Um, yeah, dude, it sounded like you had like an immense fun. I'm actually it, super it, proud that you went and did it, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 great. Like I could understand like people being a little scared to jump into this because if you can't just talk with people it could be a little bit weird because it it took some time for the people to kind of warm up when i got there i was you know asking people questions i was kind of warming up you know like warming them up a bit because i wanted to have like a good experience and i want everyone to be i didn't want everyone to be like awkward and stuff so i was joking around and stuff and after a while after like me I do a lot of I do a lot of role playing, a lot of flavor, a lot of flavor text for a character and everything like that. Um, do you put on a voice? <laughs> I don't know which voice to use. I played a barbarian. Uh, I wanted to play a fighter, but they were telling me, "Oh, you should play a barbarian or whatever tank uh, for for a new new person or whatever." I was like, "Okay, fine." Uh, a, bar- a barbarian human variant. I know you guys don't know what that is. Uh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I've played D and D. I've played D and D before. Um, a, 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 basically, a human barbarian, like 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? You know, he can rage. He, he's like a tanky. Uh, he's, he's a tank guy. All right, that's it. He's a tank guy. I'll keep it simple for you guys. He's a tank guy. Um, his name is Poe. Okay. Um, his last name is uh, Nee. Pony. Pony. Are you one of those, Matt? No, 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 no. First name Poe. Pony. First name Poe. First first name Poe. Last mm-hmm. name is Knee. He likes to cut knees. That has nothing to do. He might raise horses, but his name is Pony. No, his name. I, is I didn't Poe. know you were you were uh, one of those uh, <laughs> Pony people, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel like you didn't think this through until this very minute, and you hadn't said it aloud to yourself. You're always just like Poe. Knee, like knees, like you were just explaining to people the whole time. You wouldn't, re- you almost refused to just say pony. First name Poe, last name Knee. <laughs> yeah, always last name Knee. Poe, the 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 slicer of knees, thinly sliced knees. Okay. Nice. Okay. I okay. like a good pony too. <laughs> a nice, nice uh, bit of lunch meat. The, the knee is the best part. Mm. <clears throat> Um, uh, when, when the when the DM was about to start, I was like, "All right, time to kill my first character," and he looks at me like, "What?" Like <laughs> it, I could tell, I could tell, like uh, like I said in the tweet, I could tell he was used to more serious players. He could have just been a little like out of it because he spent like so long building characters for people and going through all these rules with people. Um, because I was already ready to jump in. It took me 10 minutes. I was ready. I was just sitting there, you know, just chilling, you know, for a bit until they started. Yeah, so, that's the thing about D&D. The computer could make that process way faster. But 
Oh, no, no, no you're me. missing the flight. Just Sorry. thinking out loud. No, no. no. <laughs> it's Shut not up. the same thing. It is not the same thing. It's drastically different. Like, it, it, when you play these games like Pillars of Eternity and all those games, like, it's a set scenario that you run through. When you play D&D, you know, if you have a good dungeon master, it's whatever. It's whatever can happen. Whatever. Like, I didn't even get to fight, okay? <laughs> I didn't even get to fight, okay? We, we faffed about. Okay, we, you could tell, like, the guy who knew what was going on, he was like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep, right? Because we reached this town at night. And we reached to the tavern, and he was he was like, oh, we need help. Uh, there's something going on with this tower. There, there's some ghosts around, and nobody wants to go around it, and, and it's causing mayhem in, in the town, and blah, blah, blah. And there, you know, they mentioned a couple characters that could be in the middle of it. And two of the thieves were like, oh, yo, yo, let's, let's go. Let's go the Gunder's house or whatever. And what happened was, like, for instance, let me g- give you an example. He's like, uh, this guy has... Uh, can speak into your mind. Te- it was a telepath, telepathy. Is that how you say? Yeah, telepathy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, telepathy. There it is, telepathy. But the other guy, I, I guess you can't talk back or whatever. So I was like, just, just whisper it. Just, just, just say it. He did. <laughs> I was like, does he know? I asked him, like, does he know that you have telepathy? They just, just, <laughs> just say it anyway and watch him react. Like, like having that, like joke. Yeah. Is is something that you just don't get from a computer game, and then he was like, "All right, um, he he gave us directions for Gunder's house, and then he's like, all right, I'm a thief. I want to roll for for stealth. He rolls for stealth, and he slips out, and he goes outside, um, and then the dungeons master is like, do you even know where it's at? He's like, well, you gave me directions. He's like, well, I didn't actually gave you specific directions. You don't even know what his house looks like. <laughs> He just knows that he's on the opposite side of the town. <laughs> so he's just sitting out there. He's like, wait, what so what, what, what I do? Like, it, it's like just jokes that go in between there. I don't want to sit here and, and, and tell you the whole damn D&D story. But, like, this is like jokes that happens. There was some, like, cheese and, and bread, right? And uh, Kay, well, well Matt. The, the black mat was like, oh, man, I haven't eaten in three days. Um, and I was like, I'm the big barbarian. So I was like, I cut in front of him and I start eating. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's just like, it's a good time, man. If people are willing to just mess around and joke around, like that just role playing is just fun. And roll the, I guess the randomness of the dice, like I would roll to see if I'm quiet or loud. You know, for instance, like I'll say, oh, um, we were thinking about going to the tower to check out the ghost. And and I, I, I was like, all right, I lean over to K. Let me check if I'm quiet. And I was like, I roll and I was and I got I rolled a one. So I was like, are we going to the tower? <laughs> it's really loud. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's like little stuff like that. that just kind of, you know, uh, builds up and it creates some inside jokes within the 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 one shot and it's it's a good it's it's fantastic man it's it's fantastic i got to say like hands down i'm i'm going next thursday i'm going to probably keep going and level up my character and probably really get into to some nerdy stuff a new a new Matt adventure has begun. A new weekly Matt story. The Adventures of Black Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, The Adventures of Pony. Yeah. Oh, oh my the god. The Adventures of Pony. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> his name's not Pony. His name's Poe. His name's Poe. What's his second name? Me. Pony. Hey. hey. <laughs> you know Matt like the horse. Yeah, see, I, I I picked that name for like the icebreaker, you know. <laughs> it's a conversation piece. It's a con- yeah. It's a it's an icebreaker. Get people warmed up. Get people get people loose, so we can start having some fun. It, it it's like this game is kind of like this is my element. This is my stuff. I talking to people and stuff and joking around like this is this is my stuff. And so I'm I'm just like in there. I'm in there and. Oh, and <laughs> And, you know, hopefully you have a Dungeon Master who is okay with you uh, adding a bunch of flavor to your have, character. Have you looked into um, 
the the like online D and D softwares, like not not video games. George, stop trying to make everything digital. Stop trying to well, force they yourself exist, like a, like a I'm, penis into places I'm, I'm, it shouldn't be, <laughs> or shapes it shouldn't be that resemble characters it shouldn't resemble. Oh hmm, my god. My, uh, before before we do or do not get onto that one, I at least have one video game I'd like to gloat about. I wonder if it has anything to do with VR. Have you guys played Subnautica? No, I know of it. I have played Subnautica. I feel like I remember Matt talking about it. When when was the when did you play it last? Probably around two months ago. Oh, nice, nice, because it went out of early access. It's been on Steam for years upon years, but it finally went out of early access in January. A friend of mine picked it up. Oh, it was up. an early access game. I did not I did not know that. Yeah, in a lot of ways it it's reminds a survival me of No game. Man's Sky. There's only one way for that. No thing. Man's Sky released uh, in, in, in full and uh, ended up disappointing people. Subnautica had janky early access releases that I guess disappointed less people because they claimed it was early access, but that still disappoints people sometimes because the idea of selling a unfinished product. Anyways, point is, now it's good. It's fine. It's fantastic. I had the time of my life. I uh, plugged in the PSVR headset. It's it, it works like a controller cockpit game. You can play it like a first-person shooter with, a, with stick on movement, stick on looking. And I did not get motion sickness while playing it sitting down. I have done a few hours playing standing up and to, to more or less like ground myself in the, the feel of swimming around. And and it works. The immersion, I feel, works worse better when you stand up. But that's when I get a little bit of, of, of stomach dropping moments. And I'm wondering if sitting down helps helps out even in games where you have uh, traditional locomotion. But uh, the the anxiety and the feel you get from being underwater with monsters that could nab you from any angle with, that does with sound a, fucking horrible it's horrifying i i have to strategically manage my own fears of my character that i'm like kind of having a shared experience with so uh it's it's survival crafting but it's really focused in, in a super neat way. Liam, you were talking about how um, procedural level generation can backfire spectacularly so many times and that there are at least yeah, a but I few feel like cases. You couldn't, yeah, but I feel like you couldn't really design a water level anyway. I am amazed that they managed it in the way they did. Like, I think yeah. this is... I, I still am wondering if it's going to maintain its luster after a few days because I'm starting to see some of the cracks in the, in the shine. I, that's one game I didn't get. I didn't. I didn't understand it. I, I didn't understand the. Pull I, I from think it. it's a George game. I think it it appeals to some tastes that. Uh, what you I, go out and you grab a bunch of stuff from the floor and then you go back to your your little house, your little, little tunnel thing. Well, one thing that I've space thing. really quite been enjoying is creating player designated objectives based on hints of flavor text and whatever the most demanding current upgrade is. And it trickles in um, more clues of a story that actually has a really neat twist that actually has me hooked. Uh, the, the scenery and the aesthetics of it have me hooked as well. I, you, you crash land on a, a, you crash land in a skate pod out in open water and being stranded in open water is an uncommon video game setting. It, it feels new in a weird way. There are plenty of water levels, but how often have you played a game that just is all water from beginning to end, right? As it turns out, there are occasional bits of land with really, really interesting s environmental storytelling going on on those little bits of land, and that was something I was not expecting to find. Uh, your primary starting point is in some shallows with friendly, fun fish that have like cute designs. There are these weird manatee creatures that fart explosive gas bubbles at you if you get close. And uh, outside of these shallows, though... You occasionally get glimpses of an incredibly vast, incredibly deep abyss that seeing it in VR for the first couple times, I want to say first like maybe 12 times, just just filled me up with this this existential dread of of what could be out there and and what how how different its own like like evolutionary biology might have been compared to whatever coincidence has created this incredibly tiny little human I'm piloting in, in a place it shouldn't be. And at some point, uh, 
from from the flavor text and the story I've uncovered so far, I realize I now have to go down to a depth of 800 meters to find a a particular objective down there that can only be found down there that will progress the story further. So I'm I'm working on this process of building a like James Cameron's The Abyss underwater base as a way station to make it deeper. I want to have a vehicle in there. So if something does chomp me, it at least bites through metal instead of my soft human body. And occasionally I see glimpses, just glimpses, silhouettes in the murky, foggy water of these giant leviathan monsters, at which point I immediately swim the hell away and go back home and don't even attempt to come close to them because you, I will get a physiological shock. Sometimes when, when some of the, even the smaller fishes, like, like burst out of a hole and come at me, like it's, it's a jump scare that causes a jerk. And I can't imagine what it must be like to get that sense of a jump scare from creatures as big as what are probably out there in this game and the unknown knowns or rather the known unknowns rather i know they're out there but i have yet to see them up close i have yet to really experiment with their ai and maybe even break the sense of horror because of how janky their animations might end up looking when you get up close right now i i i'm filled with this anxiety this curiosity like i want to know more about what's out there in this game's world but at the same time i'm terrified of what i'm gonna find and you could probably hear how excited i am in my voice from this actually like i'm i i really feel like i discovered a great george game here the, the way you're describing it you make it sound so magical but like when you play that game it's freaking boring you think so <laughs> How are you? It sounds so like, oh my god, it looks yeah. so beautiful. I'm out there, and then what the what the hell are you doing for all of that? You're what collecting little little shrubs for your ship? Like, well, last night I explored an island with a crash ship of survivors on it who had like Bioshock audio logs. They had instructions on how to grow plants, so now I'm going to be putting a like plant environment in my base <laughs> and and it's gonna really help out with these food mechanics that have been ticking down real fast i think i think you just gotta be in a mindset of like making your own story out of out of the flavor text and the subtleties you slowly prod like it's nothing to do with the story it has something to do with the gameplay what am i doing you're, am I you're trying you to get off the, the planet little, little, oh. little, you, you finally craft a little knife thing and then you go yeah. around and then you don't use it though. Gun. There's not a lot of combat. I wow. Know. I'm I'm surprised by how little combat there is for a game that feels like such a full, uh, an honest exploration of what makes the ocean fascinating. Because what are you gonna do against a giant leviathan predator? I it's it's almost like a three dimensional stealth game in a weird way. Like you kind of stick to shadows and cover, even though you're underneath the water, which means getting down deep. I was trying to squeeze yourself under whatever little rock I guess the big monsters can't fit under. I want to see you beat the game. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, hmm. Dude, I don't know. I've, I've, I've heard some responses on Twitter. It seems like a love it or hate it sort of thing. But for me, whatever play style I've carved out here is actually progressing it fairly quickly. Like every hour I'm finding something new that introduces some neat new little gameplay mechanic like i don't know i just i i managed to finally craft up a rebreather last night so now i can explore deeper darker caves that have beautiful bioluminescent eels and and, and jellies floating around magical mushrooms i i feel like all right so there's like the minecraft and terraria line and then there's like the Stardew Valley line, you know, that type of area. And I feel like Subnautica is the Stardew Valley area. That that part. That, which I just don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get I don't Do, do, do you think it's it. a little more underdeveloped? Yeah, I don't know. I feel between the sea monsters and it potentially being boring, I I, I don't think I could play. You're just out there in the sea. Gathering stuff. That's what you're doing. And I, I, I didn't play VR, it in VR, I can imagine which the experience I think it would be cool. pretty Oh intense. my god. No, you walk outside of your escape pod that's just floating in a raft out in, out in the ocean, and you're looking at a giant mountain-sized spaceship. You can explore that wreckage. That was my first stop, actually. It's, you're like, oh, I need a radio. I need to make a uh, repair tool to fix this radio. It needs metal salvage. Okay, I'm going to go out there and salvage the ship. Oh, the ship's radioactive. I need to go back home, make a rad suit to further explore the ship. That's unlocking more stuff that I can further explore in nature. There's there's a nice 
balance and sense of pacing to whatever whatever style I've managed to craft up to. And maybe the VR helps. I, I think, the think the VR is definitely helping. Like, yeah, it's absolutely. definitely helping. I played it in 2D. Which is weird to say nowadays. Yeah, I, I played in All 2D. Right. None of us are Patreon rich yet. <laughs> also, shout out to patreon.com forward slash Liam Edwards. Yes, give us money. Wait, All what? of us. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? Uh, what Liam, you have a uh, Liam Patreon? Redid, yeah. Well, I, I had one anyway for Final Games, and it's now changed to just me as a creator. Oh my god. Yo. Give me the money. Give me yo, money. Yo, yo. Chill out. Chill out. I'm like... <laughs> I need, I need, I need that Patreon money to buy a VR headset. Let, for fuck's sake! Let's, let's, let's start, let's start a dad and son space so we could do a, a D and D show. <laughs> and I could be a dungeon <laughs> That's why I was asking about the computer versions, not because no. I want to kill no. video com- analog games, but I oh want to just God. have fun with my friends. Yo, people who play D and D way more than I have, please tell this man that he's wrong. Tell him, tweet at him. He's wrong. I, okay? no, I it's I'm about just, the human interaction. People, we can still people, get that. Everyone's on their phones all the freaking time now. Okay, you remember those days back in the day where like every everyone was outside and stuff. So like I sound like a only, dad now, but listen. Yeah, no, no, no. I agree. Listen, I agree, Matt. Human like, interaction, the, man. We need more of those activities. I man. kind and of agree. And that's why I Matt. like California because there's more of that stuff here. I agree because I w- the only real time I really got into D and D was when I was back at Rockstar, and there was a guy called Nick McVeigh. He was the IT manager, and he was the guy who would DM all of the Rockstar D and D nights. And he had like a very strict rule that if you brought your phone in, you were banned. Hell yeah! Like Hell you yeah. were banned. You weren't allowed to play if you touched your phone or anything. If My you brought God. it in, like you were banned. You had to leave. You, so. Oh. You guys, I literally the only reason I brought it up was to tease the possibility of us playing it through the internet together with with our human interactions. I mean, I I'd be voices. down for that. I'd be down for that. But let me clarify. I want D and D because I mean I want DM because that that's that. <laughs> I don't know if I have the I don't know if I have the expertise for that. But man, if we could find like a DM and do like a one shot, that would be like a tabletop simulator sort of night. You know, uh, something that's not not no. a fancy big video game, but something that still has fucking, us like rolling dice. Yeah, if you're a fucking amazing DM, experienced DM, send us an email because whoa, apart from whoa, that, we're doing we're, this. We're whoa. all awful. Yeah, we're oh doing it now. We're doing. Oh it my now. god. Okay. Well, relax. Let's let's shit, talk about shit, this a little podcast bit more. police. Let's, 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 relax. let's relax for a second. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting, though. Are, are, is, it, is it time for us to, to drain the weasel and then um, talk about penises? Time, time for us to um, Not say er- erode the toad. Oh, my God. I hate everything. When it comes to great stakes, I've just raised the stakes. The Sharper Image is one of my favorite stores with fantastic products of all kinds. That's why I'm thrilled they agree with me. Trump steaks are the world's greatest steaks, and I mean that in every sense of the word. And the Sharper Image is the only store where you can buy them. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had. Truly in a league of their own. Trump steaks are five-star gourmet, quality that belong in a very, very select category of restaurant, and are certified Angus Beef Prime. There's nothing better than that. Of all of the beef produced in America, less than 1% qualifies for that category. It's the best of the best. Until now, you could only enjoy steaks of this quality in one of my resort restaurants or America's finest steakhouses, but now that's changed. Today, through the Sharper Image, you can enjoy the world's greatest steaks in your own home with family, friends, anytime. Trump steaks are aged to perfection to provide the ultimate in tenderness and flavor. If you like your steak, you'll absolutely love Trump steaks. Treat yourself to the very, very best life has to offer. And as a gift, Trump steaks are the best you can give. One bite and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And believe me, I understand steaks 
It's my favorite food, and these are the best. Back from our mystical adventures in the D&D realm with Pony-san. Yep. <laughs> that makes it so much worse. Yep. It's in the news. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot of weird stuff is happening these days, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been a weird week. We we already like tickled one of the weird topics with that DMC oh my song God, thing, you know. Jesus <laughs> tickled. I don't even want to associate the word tickle and whatever that is. Well, well we, we uh we brushed what are you guys if you will. About? We 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 stroked one one wackiness which was Capcom like if only I could be as innocent as you met. <laughs> Capcom re-editing their trailers, taking down the DMC song that that everyone hated. Like that's weird. That's unprecedented. I don't know if that's happened before. Um, um, there's also this like whole thing with with Stormy Daniels and Trump's toad penis. But I don't think we got time to dwell. I don't know if that's quite important enough to video games. Oh God, it would be fun though. But to to, to like put a real big important wait, wait, wait. actually super relevant spin on this Whoa. weirdness wait 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 what happens yeah, yeah. if trump's penis gets oh my God. one of those uh crown things on his penis like no, what happens no what if trump <laughs> no what if trump and balzet fuck no then I guess he'd have to. He'd the peach. Crop. I reckon. I reckon there will be some form of fan art out there already of Trump's toad penis fucking Bowser. I can Jesus almost guarantee Christ. it. I'm gonna Google it now out of the interest of the show. There's definitely toad been penis. fan art of Bowser already. I don't know if there's fan art of, of Trump's toad penis, but but apparently Bowser is the real no, no, news no. story we're, we're dwelling here. on. While we're here, <laughs> why did I think of this? Because I know you want to brush over why? it, like you want to brush Trump's toad-headed no, penis. No, I don't want to brush Trump's toad <laughs> penis. <laughs> Bowser, say what you like. That shit fucking is amazing. That guy. Okay. Made, so, for anyone who doesn't know, very quickly. A guy made a comic about the end of Mario Odyssey where mm. Peach rejects Bowser and Mario. So both of them, looking pretty solemn and sad, use the new crown. Bowser from does. Bowser does, and Mario's like, oh? Yeah, yeah, no. The, the crown <laughs> oh. from the new Super Mario Bros. Oh. game where the Toadette turns into Peach. So now How Bowser, the hell did we get here as a society? So Bowser turns into Bowser, and Bowser's a sexy motherfucker, right? But that guy went from 75 followers to, like, 40,000 in one day. It became the most... It became the number one most trending topic in Japan. Yeah. And not only that... Oh, not God, you're going to get to it. Not only that... Ugh. It raised Nintendo's stock <laughs> by 4% higher than the most recent Direct that announced Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Are How you sure it has to do with the meme, though? Yeah, because the timing of everything. Uh, the, I guess as long hit. as it's trending on Twitter, it would increase some kind of value somewhere. I just it was, it, Nintendo would number one trending in Japan because of this comic. Oh my god! And because of the uh, just like hundreds of thousands of fan art based Which on it, includes actual video game and anime artists who are in the industry. They are drawing Bowser fan art. There is a change.org petition to art. make Bowser. Canon that has nearly 5,000 signatures. <sighs> See, the, the thing is, you, I think that's the, the whole point of Bowser being so popular is probably kind of like that, you know, the deeper meaning behind that. People are probably taking it. Oh, yeah, people want to fuck Bowser, but they just don't want to admit that they want to fuck Bowser. They want to fuck a well, sexed up peach version of Bowser. Well, okay, no. I mean, in real world, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, you know we don't have to talk about that. So in real terms, <laughs> you mean people want to fuck Bowser, but they don't want to right. admit fucking Bowser. 
Okay, I don't I don't know if like it's my my brain like my my very like like analytical mathematical not artsy brain. I don't know if I get it, you guys. Well, okay, all right. Well, let's let's put it let's put it in a real perspective for you, George. Uh what okay. about the people who the accepting people for who they are? accepting like transsexuals and stuff like that. What does like that have that. to do with a fictional well, character? Well, about, well, about transsexuals and stuff like that. Like that whole huge movement. When you look at Bowsette, what do you think? I, I think of people retweeting sexy fan art. I have a feeling this would not have happened earlier. The internet would have thought it was gayer than it is, but... Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I still don't understand why it's blowing up so big, though. Like, why now? The comic it's, is it, pretty good, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, but the character, it just... it, it She strikes me as, as Peach in a Bowser costume. That's right. I feel like this character's existed yeah, before. that's the point. It's that simple. No, that's that's the point, though. It is but, that look, simple. You could also, except for the accepting thing, you could also think about it in a very nerdy way, a very lonely, nerdy way. Mal, um, um, <laughs> Mauser? <laughs> Mauser. Oh, my God, I found it. 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 What did you I find? I fucking found it. I found, I almost found it. Found it. What did you find? Discord will show all. Oh, oh God. no. Oh, oh no. God. God damn it, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> For curious listeners, if you really, really have to know, check the timestamp in the description. God damn. <laughs> yeah, I should definitely put a... There's not even anything not safe for work in the image, so I don't know if I should put a not safe for work warning on on this discussion nor the okay, picture. Okay, no, but your okay. imagination after what we've talked about. We said penis more than once. Yeah, all the all right, not all right. safe for... Okay. okay. Let me, it's let me all say in your this, head. Like, all right, think about this, and if you want to dive deeper into it to for make you understand. Other than that, think about Mario, of, of Peach never accepting Mario, Mario never getting the girl. And then he <laughs> and, and just resorting to fucking Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. And they hook up. They're, they hook they're up, fictional man. characters that are pixels on a screen that have like cartoonishly unfuckable proportions. Hey, Mario's got those fucking lumps. He's got hips that don't lie. His legs are like shorter than his torso. Let me actually take a second look at that. I don't know. Mar in, in many versions wow. of Mario's anatomy look extremely wow. let's, cartoony. Let's all take a deep dive into Mario's curves. I mean, please. you could you could also take a look at this. Liam, that's actual porn. <laughs> I'm not putting a link to the description of that. Then I would have to put a not safe for work <laughs> warning on this show. <laughs> Delete this. The Dad and Sons Discord is not a not safe for work Discord channel, thank you very much. Also, isn't this illegal in Japan, by the way? I don't see any blurring on this image. You're gonna get in trouble from the cops, you know. <laughs> oh god, thank god this this podcast is not live and with video. <sighs> Oh God! Well, we were gonna talk about Telltale imploding on itself, but I yeah. mean, what's let's the fucking that. point? Let's do that. No, no, let's not talk about memes for the new section. I, I, we can't get sadder at this point, you know. Even though this is a true, real no, story feel, that's I real feel, sad that did affect the, real this people. This is the problem. We have toned Ugh. down ourselves. Ugh. And now we have to talk about the fact that 225 people <laughs> lost their jobs, which is an incredibly sad thing. <laughs> Off the back of making people look at porn. Like, speaking of what, yeah, you made us look at porn just now. God damn. I, I have to I do the co-optional podcast after this, you know. I don't got to, anyways. Oh, um, the name drop. The name drop. Oh, Ma look at that. I'm the big dog on campus. I'm going to take the pawn with me to the famous podcast. <laughs> I wonder what the listeners think of me, us giving you always a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> 
we're just we're just keeping George's ego in check. That's what we. Yeah, doing. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Speaking of how far down honest. we've gone as a society, um, Telltale apparently had its investors pull their plug because apparently game studios that house themselves in this incredibly expensive city of San Francisco can't pay their own rent without investors from their own sales. The, it's not the products that fund the video games it's the freaking investors who pull the string ah! they decided to pull their strings oh my god i had safe search on and that shit still came up oh, oh my oh. god in japan no less actually liam i have a legitimate question i'm, I'm just curious <laughs> very very off topic Tell very tale. very quick just give me a yes or a no maybe a little okay. bit of elaboration but let's not dwell because we don't have time <gasps> when you google image search for <laughs> naughty things on japanese google are the results pixelated or not no. Uh, well, ah. it depends. I mean, if it comes from a Japanese source, I guess it does. If it doesn't come from a Japanese source, then no, it doesn't. So they, like, enforce the production of pornography, but not the distribution. Interesting. Anyways, okay, that's all. Um, what, was, what, what was I even talking about? Telltale Studio? Real people who aren't fictional oh, wow. characters on internet porn <laughs> are, um, are, are <laughs> having to scrounge for survival that, all Matt. of a sudden. Their that's... healthcare ends in, like, six days. But, but um, um, California's an at will. Look at the yeah, picture, yeah. though. The, the picture. No. Oh, Jesus. That. Oh, actually, that one's not. I'm actually okay with this. I'm not. Whoa. That. I can't believe you're okay with that. I'm more okay with the previous one, which is more explicit than the third but, one Liam just posted. Which see, I'm, I'm actually more, I can't put Bowser a link right there. Right? I'm a bit more okay with this. <laughs> that's like the oh Koopa Queen, right? That's Miss Bowser. Oh, okay. Nope. Nope. No, because no, that she's got the hair and the crown. She hasn't got the like shell though. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Liam is is horny on main live on. Enjoy editing this episode. I'm not. I, you should look at the description. There's pictures of Bowsette in between, before and after the Telltale layoff link. <laughs> We're off topic already, and there's like a lot to discuss here about at will employment laws, unionization, funding of game studios, uh, uh, workers' rights. But but Liam's here on Japanese Google image search, exploiting it for all it's worth. And it's weird because I would be usually the one incredibly angry about the Telltale situation, but now with Bowsette taking over the world, I kind of just feel at peace. That's the that's the whole point of memes, is it not? Yeah, god. no, that's what I said today. I tweeted that, like, I'm oh not my usually god. big on memes, but between Bongo Cat and Bowser, I'm kind of okay. <sighs> I don't know what I'm more disappointed in. The way this podcast has been going, or the skeleton crew of 25 developers who are reported to be remaining and working on the Minecraft story mode streaming version for Netflix. That's what <sighs> Telltale is still working on. That's their that's their their last and final project. The swan song of Telltale is very, very likely to be Garbage. Kids on Netflix streaming a video game, which is a, a precipice of a slippery slope of scary thoughts. Um of of one of their most it I would argue uh, shameless, easy, low effort uh, license grabs, which I mean, was Minecraft. Into that, like it, d it really doesn't matter at all. Whatever the final project is, and whether the news today of them finding new partners or publishers to help oh with my God, the yeah. final episodes of Walking Dead, it's irrelevant. Two hundred twenty-five uh, which... people lost their jobs. They will have spent years. Sac like I have talked on this show so much about crunch being awful and terrible and those people will have spent the past you know five to ten years that telltale, telltale has existed working those horrible hours because that studio churned out like game A after lot. game episode after episode and now all those people lost their jobs which sucks but not only that because of the way american laws are all fucked up and you're all different all over the place they have not got paid severance pay they've got nothing Nothing to show for yeah, any Matt, of the work they did. If you uh, Damn. 
your your California job. Um, you have the wonderful, beautiful right as a worker to quit any time you want without having to really justify yourself. <laughs> However, your employer can do the same to you, and they're more likely to do that than you are to them because you depend yep. on them. And you know there are a lot more of us than them, but um, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to piss off a few uh, uh, people in, in a certain very high income bracket by uh, talking talking. Uh, uh, those uh those sorts of, of facts of life anyways okay they're they're telltale has released a statement saying that they're looking at multiple potential partners they can outsource the final episodes of of the walking dead to which is god what a way to add insult to injury like if anything the walking dead is is symbolic like i don't know if, if telltale's had the greatest past couple years or if the walking dead has landed in the greatest possible space obviously over... not like it's obvious yeah. the walking dead episode one made them a butt ton of money and but it's put representative them in a really good favor and then everything else after that took a huge dive i mean it's they have it's had... the mgs3 of telltale no, like no one should debate whether telltale was a good studio or not if you're a good studio and you had the IP licenses for Game of Thrones, the biggest TV show in the world, Minecraft, the biggest video game in the world, Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the biggest Marvel franchises in the world, you were doing stuff with Netflix, you had The Walking Dead, another one of the biggest TV shows in the world, oh, and you, you still screw that all up? fucking screwed it up and went bust, you are fucking terrible. Whoever I don't know was if running it's a that sign company... That was awful. Do you think it's a sign of whoever's running the company or a yes. sign that a lot of other companies are just run this poorly and that we've kind of sort of come to accept it up until we realize the consequences like I this? I mean, some of the stories that came out after everyone, you know, got let go, I mean, then employees don't have, don't give a fuck anymore. It means they can just say what they want. It was evident that the studio was exploitive. The management was awful. Decisions just were ma just made on a whim. You know, people approached them <clears throat> and were like, hey, look, we have this franchise. Make a, a an episodic series about it. Okay, we'll pile it on with the rest of the shit our small 200-plus studio is doing. Uh, and the, the grand irony of it is that episodic games were kind of like supposed to save a, a certain yeah, and it's, market it's so of middle-tier AA devs, and like the that Minecraft backfired. On, the Minecraft oh. one went on for far too long. They had the Borderlands one as well. I forgot about that. I mean, Which that, got great reviews, all it things did. considered. Like, one of the good ones, you know? The Game of Thrones one came out. Yeah. It, people paid attention because it was Game of Thrones. And then it was obvious that it was pretty fucking shit. So no one paid attention to that. The Guardians of the <laughs> Galaxy one. I mean, did that even come out? I can't remember. Yeah, no, no, it did. And, and it got, like, high sevens. If I remember correctly, I like, think it was not one like of the, the good start ones. Of the Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us is like yeah. the one that you know everyone remembers. That was pretty good, uh, and we'll never see it followed up. I think it did kind of leave with an open ending too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it did. And, it was and a those good first. Oh, they had Batman as well. They had fantastic. fucking Batman as well. Uh, 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 they they had oh a Stranger God. Things one on the way they for the next season. Stranger Things, Batman, oh. Minecraft, Guardians of the Galaxy. What a Walking week! The Game of Thrones. Oh my God! Uh, what How a week, you guys. Earth? How on earth do you fuck that shit up? Look at our fucking Discord right now. To look at this week. I anyways. Anyways, yeah. Oh, he's talk he's talking about the the news uh, audience. He's talking about the news that we've posted inside the, our Discord. What we've been talking uh, about this week. That's so the stuff in our Discord does have the letter N and S in it, but it's not news. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Liam. What time is it over there in Japan? It is nearly. It is thirty five minutes past one in the morning. Let's get Liam to bed. We are going to do some Dad Den submissions. Uh, Dad Den is a audience interaction segment in which we uh, pretend that we are doing a game show. What if we pretend? Yeah, right, right. In which it's we take real. your games, make them episodic, exploit you, and then drive ourselves into the ground. Yeah. What Dad Den is, is a uh, 
pitching contest in which uh, listeners will submit their game ideas um, and see what we think of it and if we would be willing to invest in them if we had money to invest in things. If you are interested in submitting a Dad Den submission to the Dad and Sons podcast, then please send us an email describing your imaginary game's name, its main gameplay concept or main mechanic, its art style, its themes, and its projected money and time budget. Uh, uh, be aware that, that you will be sending your idea out into the open, so maybe if, if you're not working on the game at the moment, then, and if it's something you do plan on working, if you, if you have those, those skills and those resources, be a little careful. Otherwise, send in ideas that you want to be seen made in the world, or ideas that you might be working on and just want send some, some suggestions and feedback to us on, so that we can steal them. We're, we, I, Liam's the only one here who makes games. I mean, me and Matt, we are, we're, we got squeaky clean hands here, right, Matt? Yeah. Matt's making like m- imagination games. Pony, he's ponying them up. Uh, we are ponying games. up our viewers. I mean, that's what D and D is. No, no, no. I'm not the DM. I'm a player. You will Just like be everybody else. I, 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 am, I am the player. So, mm-hmm. our first submission this week comes from an internet person named ZM Dumpbox. Uh, hmm. They have a I game think called... I posted one before. Uh, he comments I don't know if quite... I've seen this one before. I don't know, but he comments quite a lot on our YouTube channel, so hello to him. It sounds like a legitimate... Dumpbox. A uh, uh, serious submission. Um, it That's is where I called. The tissues after seeing Bowser. Oh, God! The, the, Japan's <laughs> sexual politics have eroded any sense of Western decency. You're talking about very, very personal, intimate habits here. Ah! And my desk is falling apart. It, God, I feel okay, like anyways. this is just me getting payback for you just trying to ram Trump's penis all over my no, introduction. Oh God! I don't want to imagine Trump's. Toad. Okay. Zeon Dumpbox has submitted an idea called Mazazume Wars Arena Bash Festival. It's like Gundam Versus, but with fourth wall breaking Digimon esque monsters. Uh, Digimon. They. They, they, they say Digimon. they're D- 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 oh, yeah they're they say they're going after a very like Japanese style idea of IP creation that is make a whole bunch of fun characters who potentially could be thrown in a whole bunch of games of different genres maybe different cross media products uh, we're we're basically doing a kind of kind of Pokemon sort of idea the the main gameplay concept is an anime arena fighter in the third person perspective players choose one character and one assist partner from a gallery of characters then pummel each other on an arena stage not unlike a versus fighting game. Winning is determined through a battle strength system. When players aren't engaging in up-close fisticuffs, they'll run around the arena in order to gain positional advantages and create opportunities for attacking and defense, such as running behind pillars, jumping off platforms, and smashing walls to reduce cover. The battle system will be designed for relative simplicity and accessibility, with an emphasis on close combat, solid, oofy attacks, uh, limited combat mechanics, sorry, I had to uh, <laughs> uh, cool down after that, that oomph. And status play involving poison effects, speed down, attack ups, whatnot. Juggling and combo culture will be de-emphasized by design, so casual players and gamers who don't specialize hardcore and versus fighters don't feel intimidated by more aggressive combo happy players. Controls will be simple to pick up. You got a uh, standard attack, a jump button, a special button, an assist call, and you just double tap your movement for dash, hold joystick in a direction for different attacks, which... Uh, it sounds to me like a, like a, like a smash, but with original Pokemon monsters. Um, anyways, back to the pitch. Uh, they say the depth of the system will lie more in raw mechanic differences between fragments, that is, hit frames between different animations, efficacy of status ailment delivery, damage values, dash distances and speed, etc. First thing I want to point out before we get into the gameplay Whoa. is that he wrote down the etymology of the word, yeah. or the pronunciation. But it's wrong. Oh? Oh? That's not how you would pronounce it in Japanese, if that's what he's going for. Masazume? Ma. He's put Masazume. But it would be Masazume. Ma. 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 Not ma? Mu. 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 Ma. Ma. Like, like, like Ma Bell? Like Mam. Oh, Ma, okay. Masazume, masazume. He's got the rest of it right, just not the m at the start. It's a ma. Masazume would be the Japanese George breakdown. This is a yes. very detailed submission. Yeah, yeah. I, I basically yeah. was just staring at that etymology. He wrote while... a thesis. 
it's, this, this, it's, there's, this, this has I more we were clumping down than on this shit, section. George. There's, there's a couple paragraphs per... I mean, do we have any further thoughts before we get into the art style? I can't even remember what the gameplay was about. It just yes. had a lot of gameplay what? words. I zoned out. It was a very specific description. The image in my yes, head but looks... You, you reeled off at like 5,000 miles per hour. So kind of, kind of, I'm imagining like a third-person isometric perspective. You got a smash control well, scheme. Like there aren't traditional you said it's combos. Like Gundam versus, so I just imagine it's like Gundam right, versus right. with new with new animals, which might actually do okay in Japan. I don't know. There's a lot of fucking competition over here. <laughs> uh, so, so the characters are all cartoonish designed amalgamations. They are theme centered around occupations or skills, and the creative appeal for like both that. our design staff and players is in finding out how these designs translate into combat. Some fragments have fragments is the name of the monsters have straightforward designs, such as the fragment for the main character in a associated web comic is a karate g wearing anthropomorphic piglet. Some might not be so much, like a Bastet-like cat lady in an Egyptian-themed baker's outfit or an anthropomorphic elephant basketball players. The fun with these monsters is seeing how seemingly mundane skills can be recontextualized for combat, whether it be straight attacks, healing offensive errors, air denial, restraining movements, etc. Again, seeing a lot of Smash influence, a it lot of the fun of Smash is... reminds me of the volleyball episode from Hunter x Hunter. Like how they turn volleyball into... Or is it dodgeball? I think it's dodgeball. They turn dodgeball into like... A fucking hype as fuck battle. Why did you remind me about that series again, dude? Because it's amazing. Yeah, but we I know. can't. We can't and finish we can't it. can't rewatch it. I know, but the manga is starting again, so that's okay. It's always been starting. It's been starting <laughs> for years. <laughs> it's just never gonna end. He's gonna. He's definitely gonna pass away before. Don't anyway, <laughs> themes. The story is only going to need to be as deep as each Street Fighter game's entry is. The fragments are a byproduct of some Big Bang-like event in the universe. The Kickstarter creation itself, uh, uh, That's the a creator bit more than Street Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> the center of the universe is the uh, event known as Masazume, the Existence Claw. Fragments constantly feel the urge to gain power in order to reconnect with the Claw. To do that, they must defeat other fragments and absorb their essence. Oh, that's 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 a little bit brutal. Also, I think that's more story than Smash Brothers typically has. I mean, no, none are winning Oscars. It's fine. Which you know doesn't really super matter for a video game. But wait, there's a twist. Okay. These never-ending conflicts are known as the Masazume Wars, the in-game creation myth. Masazume Wars is actually the title of a long-running sandbox MMO in the 2050s, and fragments are just user-generated fighter characters, uh, personal assistant AIs, actually, that populate that game. For the purposes of our product, though, the fragments are aware of this, and they treat their roles as fighter characters as such, often lampshading the tropes they represent or use, and acting around or often breaking a very thin fourth wall with the real-world player. So now they're kind of sort of doing a, like, dot hack sword art online yeah, but you would thing. have to do that yeah but it wouldn't be much of a twist because you'd have to do that from the beginning because the player would know what the fourth wall break is from the fragments it's, it's a twist for the pitch at least oh well yeah projected money and time budget is maybe 13 million dollars over four to five years mm. If we're desperate for money, more money we could always tap the Bando Namkai's shoulder for extra capital or other resources <laughs> <laughs> just, just uh, hey, Namco, Bandai Namco, we got we got a game. It's about fragments. Just give us some money. Okay, <laughs> here you go. I mean, I like it, it. It sounds like a lot of Japanese franchises. It sounds like like yes, I can point that's out the similarities bad to part. That's the you bad think so? Part. Yeah. Okay. So let's go for it. You got okay. Pokemon. You got Digimon. You got. Let's go into it. You got stuff like Yu Gi Oh! You got Card, ca- uh, card Fight Vanguard. You have Duel Monsters. You have Beyblade. Definitely have Smash. S- I'm, I'm seeing so in much it. Smash in here. I mean, yeah, but you, we're talking about like collecting different things. It's like collecting different yeah. things in Japan is a very well worn path. It's the problem. Yokai Watch, there's another. Inazuma 11. It's another. There's a lot. It's so, gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough so, to break that market. This is interesting because because I know I know what my answer is. Liam, do you know what your answer is? 
I, I well, it's it's probably the most triple A type thing we've gone yeah. for. It's very, very Japanese, conventional. Um, I don't know how we could make the combat interesting. I mean, if you're playing as, so. You have a standard attack, a jump, a special assist call, a double tap to dash. But if you've only got one standard attack and one special, how does it make the fragments with all these unique qualities to them, how can you differentiate them between? Like if, would, if would, your selling point has have... to be your selling point has to be that all the themes are centered around occupations, which means everything has to be very different, you know? The, the basket-like cat lady who is an Egyptian-themed baker, what does she do? She, she, does she throw cats? Does she throw bread? Or does she have Egyptian powers? Like, the you need to balance that, pan. which means you, I don't need, know. you need quite a few inputs to be able to do different things that make her a varied type of character. When, you, when they're coming if you're up... going the smash route where you're pressing a direction and doing different attacks, like he said, maybe that could work then. That's okay. But yeah. I guess, like, the important thing here is making those fragments really distinct and the reason to play the game. But I like how, how they mentioned that finding out how those uh, the characters' outfit and, and skills and quirks represent their fighting moves is part of the fun. Because that's totally part of the fun of Smash. It's seeing, like, oh, which references are they going to dig up out of, out of the... the the, the, oh, the yeah. Metal Gear Solid like, games for snakes definitely. moves. And you're not limited to just like swords, guns, and magic. Yeah. Whereas in this, you can do, you know, you can have an elephant that has a basketball. So what can you do with that? Well, let's think about it. An elephant has tusks, it has a long nose, it has a basketball, and it is really heavy. So the moveset there, you can already look at like, oh, he could like jump in the air and then squash somebody because he's really mm -hmm. heavy. Or he could like throw the, he could whip the basketball really fast at people using his trunk. And, you know, that's like the fun in this idea. But I would worry uh... about the combat. I would, how do I say? I would worry about the combat doing that idea justice. Matt, do you have your answer? Does uh, is Bowsette in this one? <laughs> I mean, if we get that Bowsette DLC, I'm in. I'm Matt, into I think, any game. I think I I need to have a wait, talk wait, wait. with Matt, you Matt, and the internet. Matt, Matt, it's okay because Bowsette. he goes on to say there would be DLCs for some new characters and costumes. If Bowsette. we can allow ourselves to get creative. We can release this with PS4, PC, Steam, maybe a Switch port, and we can also offer like an ex Switch exclusive, like Masazume Wars game of a different genre in reception if the IP is positive. And for those who want to invest in like silver and gold and ultimate editions of the game, we can throw in weeb trash like booby mouse pads. George Bowser is so hot. Bowsette is, is so a fictional hot. character who doesn't exist and is also a fan-made creation that Can companies we have boot mouse cannot pads yet of license. Bowsette. Yo, Bowsette. Oh my god. I feel like Bowsette. that's Matt's answer. I, I get it, she's hot, but I mean, is, <laughs> that, that, is, hot. is that really George, all it takes these he's days? He's hot. He's hot. He's hot. Yeah, technically it is. Wait, is it? Yes. I guess it would depend on what mood Bowsette would be as soon in. As soon as that you'd as have soon to as ask. That crown comes off, man. It's back you'd have to, to ask how how Bowsette would like to be referred to, depending yeah, on their true. their their <laughs> lifestyle oh, that no. they choose. You know, you that is true. You just gotta be polite. It's not complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's no, just manners. Know. Has okay. Bowser transitioned? You know what? Or is, You're absolutely can he take, right. Can he take She's the crown hot. off and transition backwards? Jeez. <laughs> anyway, George, yes or no? Uh, yeah, see, I'm I'm a yes because this idea seems so safe and familiar to me that I almost find it hard to imagine it failing. But I think that's interesting because I'm over here in this in in the West and you're in Japan where you yeah, see this shit all the time. You, that tells you considering how hot the competition is here, how difficult it is for games like this to even make it to the West anyway. Yeah, cuz actually come to think of it, when we were in the arcades, we see battle arenas in the style like, of Gundam versus everywhere. You don't example, see that over here. Best example, best example, Yokai Watch is Yokai Watch was like the biggest thing here for six years running. 
mm-hmm. solid. Like it's not that popular here anymore. It's still like ingrained in the culture, but it's not. It's not Pokemon levels like it once was. Yokai Watch was just everything, and yet Yokai Watch came over to the West and it didn't even like scratch the surface. That's the kind of thing you'd be up against. So, so Japanese gamers tend to like collectible monsters. Yes, I think you would know that by now. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I I want to give it a yes, but I'm I'm like I'm not aware, you know, of how how competitive that that style and genre are. As, as not as aware as you are, for sure. Well, there is a heck of a lot of them, and not many of them make it to the West. So this would be kind of a dicey idea if you're thinking of releasing it worldwide <laughs> on only 13 million. So so I guess uh, I'm a yes, Liam's a no, Matt I'm, is uh, I'm only not a Bowser. You know, I'm not only necessarily a no. no. What's your, what's your Asterix? If if they put Bowser in. My asterisk is like, take your really cool fragment idea and the idea of them being associated with like occupations and different skill set and make a good combat system with that. And then I think it would stand out. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're going to have to make it different from Smash, though. Maybe the camera angle, the, the like third person camera angle might help. And maybe because, yeah, yeah, the, the Gundam versus is like straight behind the back. Right, so that w- that would give it some literal depth that Smash doesn't have. I would be okay with it being like Smash side two D sideways as long as um there was a bit more to it than just fighting on a stage. All right, so okay, so unfortunately, uh, Liam, what time is it over there in Japan? It is now five to two in the morning. Jesus Christ! Yeah, Liam's got to go to bed. Uh, uh, we we gotta we gotta figure out how the hell do we? I, I guess I really hope this is like the bottom of the hole. I mean, I really hope that next week's podcast isn't gonna get weirder. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Matt to come back with some more pony adventures. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, uh. come on, let's not call it pony adventures. Come on now, this is the the adventures of Poe. Adventures of Poe. Let's just let's yeah. do it like that. Okay. All right. Say it again. Okay. Say it a little faster. Say it a little faster. Knee. No, no. Full, full name. Full name. No, no. Poe. That's Knee. it. But that's not your character's full name. Poe. Knee. Knee. And, uh, no. <laughs> uh, Mr. Knee. <laughs> you can call Mr. Knee if you want. You know, Mr. Knee. I don't understand. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable calling you that. <laughs> Nepo. <laughs> Nepo's a better fucking name. Nepo? Oh come on, it's at least not pony. It's like a a, a pole coming out your knee, a nepo. Oh, a nepo. <laughs> at least it's not a breed of like horse. Wait, wait, are we? Was it pole as in like a flagpole, or no, pole no. as in like the ghost from Zelda? No, like no, it's Edgar. Po. Oh. Edgar okay. Poe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's Pony. I, it's Pony. I, I was thinking that that if there was How's a the pole, knee spell? like like a knee, like like your knee. Oh, oh like Pony. Yeah. See, I I was thinking, and I. Pony, like Japanese knee. No. N-I. I told I t- no. I told you guys knee, knee. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds exactly the your same knees. as knee. No, your knees. I said your knees. The, the slicer of knees. That changes everything. <laughs> I told you to th- See, you guys don't listen to me. You see, this now is the problem. Now you're Poe This is the problem, okay? We need to solve this. We can't have a podcast like this, guys. What's going on?